So in my two week hiatus where I was getting a new power supply from my microphone, Apple did something tremendous. They discontinued the iPod. Now this shocked a lot of people, but they weren't surprised. I mean, the iPod has been on life support for a few years now with the iPod Touch not really getting updates. And I mean, they have Apple Music, so it makes sense to discontinue the iPod, I guess. But I mean, it was still a bit heartbreaking because the iPod is what saved Apple from despair in the first place, if you don't count the iMac. I mean, the iMac was mildly successful, but the iPod was the real success. And I do believe the iPod is what led to the MacBook Air, the iPhone, the iPad, and the information age that we're currently in. It all started with the innovation of the iPod. But despite that, I am now holding the last iPod in my hands. This is the seventh generation iPod Touch released in 2019. It's kind of sad when you think about it, you're holding a now dead product. But I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start from the beginning. So at the time of the iPod's release in 2001, most MP3 players look like this. I know, terrible. These MP3 players were bulky, they had really low storage, and most of all, they had terrible controls. But the cornerstone of the iPod's success is Toshiba. Before the iPod was even in inception, Toshiba released this new drive that was just 1.8 inches tall. At the time, that was tiny. Absolutely tiny. And tiny space didn't mean tiny storage either. These had five gigabytes of onboard storage. The problem was that Toshiba was a bit skeptical on how to use it. They thought that maybe it could be used in a camcorder. I'm sorry to all you Gen Alpha people who are watching and don't know what a camcorder is. But one man had an idea for what he could do with the drives. And that man was Tony Fidel. He thought that they could be used in a media player and he knew exactly who to pitch it to. He went over to Steve Jobs and pitched him three ideas for the MP3 player. And he specifically held his best idea for last because he knew that Steve Jobs would like it if it was last. That, that's good marketing there. So Steve picked up the last one and he said, oh, that's great. Now finish it by Christmas. So realistically, they only had around half a year to develop this insane MP3 player that had never been done before. It was, it was a time crunch, it definitely was. And a famous story that came out of this was Steve Jobs dropping an iPod prototype into an aquarium because the air bubbles that came out of the iPod meant that there was still room to shrink in it even more. But the first iPod wasn't built with no compromises. Steve specifically said, it's just an MP3 player. Don't make it too crazy. So it had a monochrome display. It was great for displaying what song you are playing, how many songs you have, scrolling through tracks. And speaking of scrolling through tracks, the iPod introduced something incredibly revolutionary. The click wheel, or the scroll wheel in this case. See, the problem with most MP3 players at the time was that they used buttons. So you had to scroll one song at a time on a button, like this. Does this look intuitive to you? With the scroll wheel, it would use a circular motion to scroll through many songs at a time, and it was it was genius. Despite the monumentous task of developing the iPod, they actually did get it out by Christmas. And it sold... modestly. I mean, this was a first generation device. It wasn't perfect. It was more of a proof of concept than a finely tuned device. And I think the best part of the iPod's marketing was the tagline. A thousand songs in your pocket. This amazing little device holds a thousand songs. And it goes right in my pocket. I mean, even nowadays that will get you excited. A thousand songs in your pocket. Back in 2001, that was ridiculous. I mean, you'd expect a thousand songs on a laptop, but on a, on a pocketable device like this, a thousand songs. That's, that's obscene. And it's not like the iPod wasn't small either. I mean, by today's standards, it is fairly chunky, but back in 2001, an MP3 player that could hold a thousand songs that was the size of a deck of cards you know, sometimes it's hard to find the right word for a thing. I mean, this was a case of everybody saying, that's incredible, but then not being able to buy one because it was too expensive. But the iPod would get cheaper as it went along. A bit later, they introduced the second generation of the iPod, which was more of a revised iPod than a new one. I think the biggest selling point was that the scroll wheel no longer actually moved. It was all capacitive touch. This was only the second time that Apple would use this technology. I think the first time that they used it was on the G4 Cube, which is an awesome computer. Well, the on button didn't actually click, you just tapped it and it turned on. It was magical back in the day. Capacitive touch meant that the wheel could be a lot more durable and stable. It also meant that the device could be a lot thinner, but it wasn't. <laughs> 
I, I don't know why they didn't try to make it thinner. They just put a new click wheel in the one or the one shell. But the big revision came with the third generation iPod. They took the idea of capacitive touch and went a bit wild with it. <laughs> Everything was capacitive touch. Every single button was capacitive touch. Nothing moved, nothing clicked, nothing scrolled. It was it was all just touch. And if I'm honest, this is one of the best looking handheld devices ever. It looks so cool, so futuristic. The buttons light up red. The only problem with the third gen iPod was that they switched out FireWire 400 for FireWire 800. And it's kind of like the difference between USB-C and Thunderbolt. Same port, but different standard. FireWire 800 was a lot faster, but a FireWire 400 cable couldn't work with a FireWire 800 cable. So they had to ship it with an adapter. And it was, it looked a bit odd. <laughs> It looked like the world's lamest extension cable because both of the ports looked exactly the same. I'm mainly here to talk about the iPod Classic line right now and maybe the iPod Touch, but I need to touch on a couple of the other ones. The first one being the iPod Mini because it introduced something that would carry the iPod line up for quite a bit. The click wheel. Now, the scroll wheel on older iPods, it was just for scrolling. It couldn't click, it didn't have any controls on it, but the click wheel could click and it made the iPod so much more compact. They squeezed that 1,000 songs into your pocket into a form factor twice as small. That, I mean, the iPod had only been out for a few years. This was a technological marvel. And I can't stress it enough, the iPod carried us into the handheld tech revolution. It's the reason why we have the iPhone. It's the reason why we have the iPad. Without the iPod, we might be living in a very different world. Apple then decided to bring the click wheel from the iPod mini to the iPod fourth generation, which means that the click wheel is now a mainstay for the iPod lineup. Yeah. And then Apple introduced the fifth gen iPod, which I think is one of the more important ones because it introduced the capability to play video. I mean, watching movies on the go was pretty ridiculous back in, what, 2005? I can't remember when this one came out. <laughs> And it was also thinner, courtesy of the new smaller drives from Toshiba again. Good, good job, Sh Toshiba. I can't say Toshiba. Why can't they just have an easy name to pronounce, like John Electronics? But I feel like Apple kind of carried the iPod success a bit too far with the 6th and 7th generation iPods. I mean, other than adding an aluminium frame and a bigger screen and more storage, they didn't really have much to call their own. But I think the most important thing that came after the iPod was the iPhone. I mean, it didn't necessarily come after the iPod, because after the iPhone came out, they introduced the iPod Touch. The iPod was a very special device. It saved Apple and it brought us to the world that we live in today. Without the iPod, we might not have the iPhone or the iPad. And I mean, as Steve Jobs said in the 80s, I think the world is a slightly better place because of Apple. And that statement reigns as true today as it did back then. The Macintosh revolutionized home computing. It made computing seem like something that anybody could do. And the GUI is something that we still have today. The iMac brought Apple back from the gutters with its revolutionary new design. I feel like a marketing person right now. I need to stop doing my corporate voice. Of course, there's the iPhone. It brought us into the smartphone era and the world will probably be a lot worse without it. The iPad brought tablets to the mainstream. A lot of people still use tablets daily today. The MacBook Air made Ultrabooks affordable. I mean, depending on your definition of affordable. And of course, the iPod. It changed the world. That's all I can say. Sorry for my two week break there. Um, I was getting my microphone power supply repaired. But yeah, um, I hopefully won't have to take another break again. Hopefully I'll be able to make another video next week. Hopefully this video will come out before Monday. And just goodbye. <laughs>